Welcome back folks. We're down the lab here and we're at the kit box. What we're actually going to do now is going to start off the first of maybe three or four kits that I'm going to do in advance and um, because when I play these I'm going to have like a kit week and I'm going to be away in Florida enjoying a little vacation and you guys can watch me build kits for a week. Um, anyway let's let's see what we get in here. This will be kit number one. Oh, it's a Logic Pro. I do love uh, I do love little kits that can be useful. So, well, let's have a look at it. Okay, so this uh, from uh, Mitchell Electronics in the UK. So I uh, well tells it <laughs> tells me what's in the package. 4001 I see. Let's get all this out of here. Anything else in there? We're going to have to go online and get some instructions at some point. Yeah, but I'm just going to I'm just go ahead and build that up. I think probably. Oh yeah, this is a this is a fairly easy build, this one. Maybe it's a good idea for me to print out the instructions. Okay, why don't I go do that? I'll get my iron all heated up and uh, we'll start putting this together. Okay, I read the instructions. They're pretty good. They're all online. It's not something you can print out. Well, I guess you could if you really wanted to. But uh, they are available online. They're pretty detailed. And the idea of these uh, three little wires here, two of them are supposed to apply the power. And one is supposed to be a ground reference for the probe. And so I'm going to, I've got these, you know, alligator clip wires here that I keep in my bin of, uh, you know, mutilated bits and pieces. So I'm going to use these. I'm going to use this shorter one here for the ground reference. And these two here for the power. I might even replace these with banana plugs someday. But uh, that's the only alteration I'm going to make to the kit. Yeah, this doesn't belong there. This is a pogo pin which is the, uh, is the probe itself. I guess that solders on here like that. So, okay. Well, let's get started with the build. And uh, unless something, as usual, unless something really interesting happens, I'll see you back at the end. Another thing I should point out is that the spacing on the resistor wires, it, it really, it, it sucks. Uh, the spacing between the pads is, is less than the natural spacing on the resistor. So it, uh, you have to bend the wires so hard that they, it, it damage may occur. So I think uh, that's a little bit of a failing. They had lots of room to, uh, you know, give it an extra 0.1 of an inch.
all finished the little logic probe here. And what I'm going to do is going to use this uh, Heathkit Digital Design Experimenter, which I did a video on a little while ago. I'll link to that down below. And we're going to use that to um, test it out. So I'm going to power it up from here. Now, this um, amber light is supposed to mean that the tip is floating, which it is. And let's let's ground this part of the circuit as well. I don't know if it needs to be grounded because this is connected to the ground of this, but we'll do it anyway. And uh, I think red is supposed to be off, green is supposed to be on, and we have this clock here. So let's uh, see if that happens here. Okay, seems to, you get a little blinking of that uh, amber light as well. And if you have something pulsing at a high speed, you're supposed to be seeing all three of them lit at the same time. And you do. Okay. So, okay, that's interesting. Let's uh, try the, the logic switches here. You see. Okay, it's low and high. Okay, that, it looks like that amber light flashes when it, in the transition from from high to low. I don't know if that's useful or not. It doesn't mention that in the instructions. At least I don't, I don't think it does. I kind of skimmed through them. Okay, it, it looks like a fairly useful little device, I think. Um, we'll try and uh, utilize it as a part of our beginner's uh, electronics toolkit and uh, see if we can get some use out of it that way. So this I see here is just a CD4001, uh, looks like a B, and it's just a quad dual input NOR gate. And uh, I'll link below to the, the schematic of it and to the kit itself at uh, Mitch Electronics. And this is a part of their blue kit um, series. I don't know why that keeps uh, flashing on and off there. I guess it's really just picking up noise in the environment. Seems a little bit unstable. I wonder if it would work better. So yeah, it, this chip can take anything from 3 volts to 18 volts. So let's see if we put uh, 12 volts on it. Oh yeah, that comes on a lot better now. A little bit more stable. I don't know why. It should work properly at 5 volts, though. It seems to be a little bit uh, reluctant to perform. Yeah. Okay, let's put it over on 12 volts. I'd say probably 10 volts is a good... Uh... <laughs> Please excuse the technical difficulties here. All right, let's see if it still uh, detects the logic properly here. We're low. Yeah, see, it doesn't detect the high. So you've got to be in the kind of in the voltage range for the logic you're testing. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to like to run off of 5 volts very well. I'm having a look with that piece of wire. Let's try a different piece of wire. There's a stiffer piece of wire. Should be grounded through here, but uh, this is. Okay, I guess at 5 volts it's, it's just a little bit uh, pernickety, but uh, it does show the logic levels fairly well. That's a shame about that. Not really liking 5 volts, because 5 volts is where I would use it most. Or 3 volts, 3.3 volts. If it works this badly at 5 volts, how's it going to work at 3.3? Anyway, I noticed in the instructions they talk, don't talk much about power supply voltage. So I don't know what range you would need to be in. 
how high could you go on the power supply to measure 5 volt logic properly. Anyway, there it is folks. I hope you enjoyed this little kit build. And uh, like I said, this is the first of a whole week of kit builds, possibly three or four of them. So we'll, we'll see you in the next kit build. Bye-bye.